mentioned that the human clinical trials don't actually follow the shift. And it's only the methodology of conducting it actually that's no fault. So when methodology per se has not been corrected, practically only to approach is what we need. Theoretically, you could say that it has no flaws at all. But practically, when all such things are happening, how do you intend we were defending the same? Uh, thank you for that question. What I've uh, been saying before as well is that we cannot eliminate the offence at the very root of it. What we can make sure of is that when a certain thing is carried out, such as human uh, clinical trials, they are carried out under the right kind of regulations and if they are not, then there is a strict way of strict punishment to make sure that certain mistakes, certain things like that do not happen, that people cannot take advantage of laws that are supposed to be there to protect people who volunteer for human resources. Thank you, Parvita, and uh, the rebuttal session for Parvita. And uh, I'd like to remind everyone, please keep your questions brief. We have a time constraint. Uh, our next uh, contestant is Aishwarya Vedula. She is going to be speaking against the motion. Thank you, Every day, we have new pathogens coming up, new diseases 
are coming up. Okay, so until unless you do some research, maybe in vitro or in vitro, or animals or humans, you're not going to get the outcome, isn't it? Okay. So, I would say that, we, as you said, the clinical trials in the human beings at various levels will be helpful. So, do you have any idea what are the clinical trials you make? What are the different clinical trials which are in work, which they perform in the hospitals or in other institutes? The goals that are doing a randomized control trial, which is usually done post uh, testing in animals and after uh, getting all the approvals ready, it's done where and then there are studies that are done with like double and triple blind blinding also where neither the physician nor the evaluator nor the patient actually knows which group they've been assigned. So this helps to eliminate some of the observer bias as well as the investigator bias. But the point to be noted is even though there are new pathogens, it doesn't rule out the fact that people have been researching on diseases that have existed for a long time. And in many situations, but when we take a regular medical history of say any condition like epilepsy, GTCS for example has been around for a long time. But now we have the power and the tools to do meta-analysis over several small studies and actually generate a huge body of evidence which we couldn't before. So that would so even though for new pathogens we should try organized studies, animal experimentation and eventually a human trial. For the old diseases that have persisted through the eons, this might be an effective way for uh, leading to new research. And also for drug repurposing, this would be an invaluable thing to assess the effects of a drug that already been established and to see where else we can use the same drug, like metformin and anti-cancer therapy, for example. Thank you. Uh, since we have crossed that line, we are excluding the rebutting section from the audience. Uh, thank you, Aishwarya. Uh...